name is Cade Hughes and I'm a 17 year old male dancer. I started dancing at age two. It was a, an obsession with my sister's tap shoes and it's now the career that I'm hoping to pursue. Throughout my dance training, I've constantly been one of very few male dancers in my class. People have often assumed that pursuing dance as a male is quite easy, but whether you are male or female, there are many struggles involved. I decided to make this documentary to highlight the challenges of being a dancer and to call into question the perception that dance is just sequins and smiles. I went and spoke with an industry professional to get information regarding the challenges that dancers face. This industry is so hard, it's ridiculous, it's so competitive um, and everybody is so good. It's not like it used to be when I started, being a triple threat was a rarity. Um, now everybody's a triple threat, they can do everything and they're very um, self-aware of what their limits are. So I find the competition really high at the moment. I think that you have to be so strong mentally to survive this industry. You have to have such self-confidence, you have to believe in your own path and your own journey. The worst thing you can do is look at everybody else around you. You have to see your own path and you have to trust yourself and you have to have dedication. So if you're not strong mentally, you will not make this industry. That's, there's no doubt about it. It's interesting to see how the mental health of a dancer plays such a big part within their lives. I believe the most mental health issues that dancers suffer from are probably body image issues. Um, Growing up being a dancer, you always wanted to look good in costumes um, and you always looked at yourself in the reflection of the mirror as well. So, and I also saw a lot of friends go through a lot of um, body issues as well. And I think that's, it's it happens in growing and developing through your teenage years anyway, but being placed in front of a mirror and also told, you know, bits and pieces are wrong with you or they should be like this um, adds to that as well for dancers. Many dancers face incredible amounts of mental, but also physical trauma. I went to speak with a few medical professionals to see their views on injuries and the health of dancers, as injury and health is a large consideration that dancers need to take into account with each and everything they do. I would treat probably about three dancers a week, um, so it just depends. It's usually a little bit busier with dancers around comp time and also around the end of the year when they do any big concerts. Really, I think the injuries would have to be um, categorised into two areas. Um, acute injuries, musculoskeletal injuries for example, generally come from lack of warm-up, acute strains and sprains, lower back pain, probably personality traits are also mean that there can be a little bit more obsessive compulsive disease in that particular group compared to other groups. Overstretching, I think the muscles you probably don't want to do. I think when you're trying to gain flexibility, you need to look at the full picture. So you need to look at muscles, you need to look at the joints, and you also need to look at the neural system as well. Um, so if you add all of those three in and you do exercises to increase, I guess, the length of your muscles um, with that, that's probably a bit more positive than just focusing on overstretching the muscles. You also need to be mindful of overstretching um, an actual joint. Um, yeah. Shailen Hughes is currently going through her journey with the performing arts industry. She, like many before her, has experienced the challenges of this industry firsthand. There's a lot of different challenges I've had on my journey, and I'm sure a lot of other performers would feel or have the same. The stability um, and the unknown, it's one of those areas that you're going into that you're not quite sure what is at the end of the line for you, and you know, it um, can be as well like quite financially unstable. You could get into a show and it's amazing and then you come out of it and you, you're back in training and paying for classes and, and waiting for the next job. Um, another one would be with your social life, you know, I guess we're athletes, we, um, we're training all the time um, and you always have to be at your peak because there's so many amazing people um, where we live going for the same, the same role as you, so you're, you're trying to be the best that you can possibly be. 
um, for those auditions. So it means that you constantly have to keep up your training and, and um, stay fit and focused and motivated. And that's quite hard. I mean, that's, you know, especially because it's such a roller coaster with the stability. Um, yeah, it's hard to fit in a social life in between that sometimes. It's hard to find a balance. There are many challenges associated with being a dancer, and many are asked why, with all the possible risks that they persist. So, why do we dance? I dance because it's the only way I can truly express myself. I dance because it is the career I aspire to do. Dance allows me to express myself better than words. As silly as it sounds, it does feel like the world sort of stands still. Um, that was when I really worked out, I, this is a passion, this is what, what I'm really into. So it seems that even though there are challenges, dancers put their bodies, minds and hearts on the line to pursue what they love. Pursuing this career can be really challenging. So I asked for a piece of lasting advice to get me through this industry. I think the main thing I'm constantly saying to my students and my protégés are to really watch your own pathway. Don't be concerned about somebody else's legs and how high they can go or their vocal talent or their strengths or their weaknesses. Think about yourself, have a notion of where you want to go and go for it and don't be swayed by all the other stuff that happens around you. Once you lose sight of your own path, you are lost in this industry. That they need uh, rest, that they need um, adequate nutrition, um, and that they should not be um, uh, overstressed in any particular area. For example, you know, young ballet dancers put an enormous amount of stress on their midfoot and on their ankle, um, and this causes can cause a lot of chronic injuries. Um, so I think that you know they need to realise that they need to do other things as well, um, and they need to rest that area. No matter the up or the down, dance can become the complete getaway that one looks for. It's not an easy journey in proving to the panel and the public that you are worth their while. But if you are hungry enough and surrounded by the right support network, you surprise yourself in what you can achieve. When you're on stage, the adrenaline that you get is like no other in, in life for me. So every risk that I have taken to pursue this, this career or this, this lifestyle um, has been worth it because um, that feeling that you get is like no other. I do. When I see people straight away, I now am at, of the age to know whether they've got it or not. I can see whether or not their own um, ability has come through yet. Whether it's whether that has or not, it doesn't really matter because it will at some point. So it's it's whether they've got the patience to wait for that to happen. But I can definitely recognise it straight away. Despite the challenges and the hardships, I'm still on my way to pursuing my dream career in the arts. When the spotlight is on me. Music starts. And the adrenaline kicks in. I become alive.